Good morning, Street, uh, about the NS Dow. It's crazy to call it history because this program just started in January of this year. Um, but uh, we started uh, in the NS Dow what's called the Service Provider Program, where 3.6 million USDC was allocated to nine different teams that provide services for the NS Dow uh, in different ways. Uh, so one of those teams today is uh, Unruggable, which has been doing a lot of great work. So give it up for a friend from Unruggable. specifically on L2 stuff, so we've been working on that. And uh, but I thought I'd also just zoom out a little bit and talk a little bit about my kind of broader vision for uh, what I'm calling the verified web. Uh, Gavin Wood is uh, credited for uh, Web3, naming Web3, and uh, he said that Web3 is a decentralized online ecosystem based on blockchain. And when asked uh, directly what is Web3, he said uh, tr less trust, more truth. I started to think that maybe there might be a need for a new term that is not so much uh, internet based on blockchain, but an actual complete end-to-end -end, uh, trustless verified internet. And so I had this idea of uh, uh, verified web. And I went on to Google to see a little bit if there was anybody else using the term, and I couldn't find any uh, original sources. Uh, but then I went on to um, uh, ChatGPT, and it, it also didn't have any um, original sources that you can find, but I uh, thought I had a pretty good description of what it is. It's, it's pretty interesting. I already had a pretty good idea. So I came up with a few principles. Uh, what is the verified web? It's human readable. I think it's important to differentiate it from, say, something like just blockchain, just internet, or just a network where, where proofs are, are being generated. Uh, because it should be human readable, it should be something that we can actually use like the World Wide Web. Uh, it should have uh, universal user profiles, and uh, everything should be proven end to end. It, sh it should, of course, uh, allow for self custody, and I think um, the point number five is also interesting. We should also try to improve upon the like the Web two and the old internet, where oftentimes as an app developer, you basically have to take on existential risks in order to launch your app uh, into obviously onto mobile, and uh, these are things that we should continue to strive for. And in terms of the tech stack, I like to say that uh, ENS is uh, one of the four pillars of the foundation of the verified web, uh, and also Web3. But uh, of course we start with, with uh, cryptography, and then we move with, and also decentralized storage. And then I also like to say that tokenization is the killer app of uh, blockchain. But the ENS is an important uh, piece of the puzzle because uh, it provides the, the user uh, readable uh, part. Uh, ENS, some people are calling it now the everything name service because we do have a, a lot more options. We can um, put names off chain or we can um, put things on L2s. But uh, .ease is actually a very unique uh, TLD in the sense that it is tokenized, it will always be tokenized, it will be trustless. It actually creates a human readable platform for building the verified web. ENS names are growing a lot. Uh, this might be a bit of an exaggeration, but basically we are uh, going through 12 million names now. And uh, if you look at the, the list of uh, projects, mostly based on large subnet projects, um, and only one of the, one of the subnet projects on this list currently is actually uh, using end-to-end -end proofs. So this is something that we hope will change in the near future and it gets into the work that we're doing at Unruggable. Uh, we recently uh, released uh, Unruggable Gateways, which is a, a system, a generalized system for taking the data from one chain and proving it down to another chain. And we're actually using this to build out a network to support the resolution of ENS names from L2s. And uh, we currently are, are focused on, uh, of course now, Name chain, which I was when I was preparing these uh, slides, I didn't know what it would be called, but <laughs> name chain and building an optimized uh, gateway uh, for name chain, and also building uh, for the uh, reverse resolution that can be rolled out onto all the chains 
is it's kind of a large task because basically for reverse resolution, you do actually need to have a gateway for every single chain. We also continue to work on research and development, which is one of the things we were funded to do for the NSDAO. And I'm, uh, we've been focused on user data. So currently, I think there's a simple mental framework that we can use to um, kind of just think about what kind of user data there is, particularly on-chain user data. And that is there are things that a user says about themselves, and there's things that can be said about the user. And if you see um, things that users say about themselves are as well uh, satisfied with PS profiling, you can put your avatar, uh, you can have your addresses. But in the category of things that uh, can be said about the user, it's much more difficult, if not impossible, to actually bring, currently to bring this data into the ENS profile. And uh, so we're working on something I'm calling uh, hooks. And hooks is a uh, resolution method that actually allows you to go and grab this data and bring it into the ENS profile. Uh, I also call it uh, resolver-specific uh, protocols. And basically it means that a single uh, resolver, which could serve many, 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 many names, for example, in base, you have one resolver on L1 that supports the entire uh, base subnet, and we can start to take uh, make special text records for just base uh, in that space. Uh, for instance, base has a developer score, so you can actually have a developer score as part of a special text record that's just part of the base ecosystem. And uh, yeah, this is my slides. Questions for Brent? And feel free to uh, call out a slide number before we go back. Okay. So, for example, base.eth, they don't uh, use like the trustless resolution end to end, uh, probably, probably because of the UX reasons. So, like the state being validated from L2 to L1 like, takes like some hours. Um, how do you see that? Uh, that like blocker uh, Well, it's not exactly that because basically um, what you're talking about is finality. And it is important to, to think like, okay, when is, particularly in optimistic uh, rollups, you know, when is the state actually finalized using the, the state bridge? But at the same time, being able to just prove the resolution um, means that if you have a verifier on L1, it is at least checking the state. So it's not just asking the, the gateway and saying, hey, what is this address? You're trying to resolve an address and then the gateway is just telling it to you and you're just trusting it. You can actually say, okay, at least it's public information that there's this state group on L1 and we're, we're, we're verifying against this public information. So it's not exactly the same as finality. It's a slightly different issue and I think that they could be upgraded to using um, um, uh, proofs and, and gateways with proofs uh, at any time that would actually benefit. Anybody else? Go ahead. What he said, it's different than having a text record read off, right? It, well, hooks is a resolution method yeah. that actually allows you to resolve text records. Uh, for example, you could resolve the uh, number of delegated ENS tokens on an ENS uh, profile. And you could have text, a special text record that says uh, delegated ENS tokens as a special text record. And using hooks, you can actually get that information in a verified way. I got it. It's kind of a macro where you say it's like delegated uh, text records, for example, with Brand or some logic that gives you that number, right? Yeah, so the way you do it is it's delegations, it's resolver specific. So basically, if you know the resolver, you can say, I want to get this text record, I know this resolver, and I will only receive results from this resolver. And if, 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 it, if the name changes the resolver, you will be you just will know that you, you won't resolve that. So it's it's an interesting concept. It took me many years to kind of just realize that it, it was just simple, and we didn't have to worry about locking the resolver, thing, which is a huge problem. And the, the, and the second difference is that despite the text record, but that returns just the storage state that a hook can be anything. It can be out of the hook, right? Yeah, the hook wraps the record. So any record that uh, can be resolved, the content record, can be res resolved with the hook. It's just basically like saying, I want this record from this smart contract. And if the ENS name happens to be using that resolver, then everything is good. And if it's not, then we're gonna, uh, we're gonna like, the client will know and it won't, it won't resolve it. And it happens to open up this huge world of on-chain data because um, all this information for the ZK. So one of the, the areas is that if you have a ZK proof, you're gonna, you're gonna store a, 
a record on Ethereum, but it has to pass a check through the ZK proof mechanism. And in that case, you can have on-chain computation, and you can actually say, you know, uh, imagine you want to prove that you're over 18. So you can say, yes, I am over 18, I can prove this, and then you can actually resolve this off of the ENS profile with a hook around the text record. And the caller doesn't even know that it's SP considering right now. Well, the, the client would be the one that's interested in this data. For instance, they would display it as some sort of base uh, verification or proof of personhood in your base profile, but it just creates a unified way. You don't have to actually go off to some other uh, a random location, some other new protocol. You can just resolve everything through the ENS yeah. profile, but it can actually be on-chain data, not just uh, the things that users say about themselves. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Sorry, last question. Um, so the on-chain activity with the social graph, do you support um, Farcaster? Can I query the social graph on their slot? Or is it only L2s like the ones you showed in the previous slide? Well, the social graphs uh, are being built around ENS names. So the question is, is like, I did actually a, a demo of, of like using a follow protocol like Brand's working on to be able to say, how do we get this information into the ENS profile? Now, you, if you want to do that through a uh, on-chain mechanism, so it's not like, oh, just trust us, you're going to have to use some method. And that, that method I'm working on is called hooks, and it allows us to get the information. And the reason why is because the ENS name can actually change its resolver at any time. So let's say you're resolving some information from another protocol, you're hooking it in, but all of a sudden then the user changes it and then spoofs it, so then they can actually change it to whatever they want. And so that, it's, we had to come up with a new mechanism. All right, give it up for Prem.